feel like I'm talking to myself practically. <laughs> That's weird. There's All right. <laughs> so yesterday we left off and I had a, pr a bug. So when I run it, it'll crash right away. Let's let it build. So there, it finally crashed. So here it shows all of the information about that my application, how much memory it takes and disk, and all the threads that it launched. Um, and this tells me where the crash happened. And this down here shows me uh, the assembly code around where it crashed, which is pretty much useless to me. I, I don't read assembly code anymore. So this is, this is tough stuff. You can kind of see the stack. This is the stack going backwards. Uh, and it, you might be able to figure out what's going on. But it crashes pretty much right when it starts up. This is the first method that gets launched. And uh, it crashes right away. So it took me a little while to figure that out. The, uh, there's no nice debugging way that I could find. Uh, the, the thing was that in my, so let's stop this, in my view controller, I had changed the word label from LE to EL. And that caused the connection between my two, um, between my view and my controller to, to screw up. So this label, which was label BMI, is, is uh, this one I think it was, um, has the old, if you, it's hard to see, but it, it has the old name for the reference, A-L-A-B-L-E. So that's wrong. So to get to this, this screen, you have to uh, click on this little circle over here on the side. This, this lets us look at the properties. Remember, we looked at the properties of each of these labels, similar to Android. And this one lets us see the outlets between this particular object and my controller code. So I want to delete that one here is the easiest way. And then um, we can go back and reattach this label to the piece on the screen. And we can do that either by cl right clicking and dragging again. Uh, and we can drag right to the label. And that makes the connection. If we drug off of the label, it would make a whole new variable, which we don't want. But now the name is right, label, label BMI. So that should be correct. Um, so be careful when you name things <laughs> and rename them. The connections go bad. There we go. Look at that. Much better. Um, what? So I can type in my height and my weight. And calculate. And it comes up on the screen. But it's got two dot, three dots here. It's an ellipsis. It couldn't fit the, the uh, value into this label. So what do we have to do to this label? Make it bigger, right? So we can we can drag it and make that uh, label bigger, and then we can set the properties of it to centered, and that that will look a little better. So we'll rerun it again. Do you know why the UI is right aligned back then? Like on your app? Um, uh, yeah, no, I don't yet. But let's we can play with that a little bit. I don't remember why. Let's see, seventy and one 
0.75, calculate, and now we have this big long number uh, that we really don't want that many decimal places, right, for our BMI. It, it's going to go off really long. So we have to uh, fix the output of that. And that is in our calculate BMI method here. Let's get rid of some of this green real estate here. And this is, this is what I was doing here. I was taking the text property of the BMI and I was setting it to uh, the conversion of the BMI calc, which is that uh, equation, which is a double, and converting it into a string and setting that label text to that. So we really want to do something more than this string. We want to, we want to format it nicer. So surprisingly, you guys already know how to do the same format. There's a method we can attach this string conversion and we can pass in a, met a variable that is the same that you've used everywhere else, the percent %2f. This comes from you know, early 80s C language and everybody has adopted that because it's simple. Everybody knows it, so why not do that? So now that's going to take my double and convert it into two places after the decimal point. That's what that means. So I should think in Java that the statement is the same. Yeah. I, I think, I don't remember now. I think so. Uh, so... So now I have two decimal points, 25.11. So let's, uh, I had thought that this problem had to do with the scaling. So let's change the scaling. And remember we talked about this being huge, uh, but it still seems to be kind of right aligned. So we'll have to figure that out. I don't have a quick solution for that. It's probably, in the old days, we had to make these springy connections between the left-hand side and the center. And so that if we changed resolution, it would be stretchy. And they had these little springs that we put on the screens. but. This is different now, so. so that was like old school responsiveness. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so there is probably something in here that makes that, and I just don't know what it is yet. So we'll figure that out. All right, so any questions on that so far? We were able to get data from these text area fields, do some calculation. Uh, we drug the outlets and the actions directly from here and it created a little bit of code that we filled in. So now we can uh, move on and do some more fun stuff. <clears throat> Let's add a radio button. So in iPhone, they don't have the concept of a radio button. They have this uh, object that we can drag on the screen called a segmented control, which is a way of having a, a, a one, it's, it's like a, a differently looking radio button, yeah. It's really all it is. So I can drag that out on my screen over here and uh, let's make some more room for it. This is a lot easier to use than Android. All right, let's put it maybe up here, and there we go. So they're all lined up. This is now uh, an object that is a UI segment control object, and it has its own properties. We can, if we look at the properties over here on the right, we can say, um, I want to have more than, than a couple 
of segments. So it's a way of having, I can have a button on the screen that does all of this kind of stuff, switching back and forth. So if I run that, it will show up on the screen. It's just not tied to any code. So I can click on these buttons, and I can only have one button selected at a time. But it, it lets me have, uh, it, it's similar to a, ra a radio button. But a radio button on a phone is a little hard to touch. And I think that's why they made these big, big segmented controls when they first came out. All right, so let's, uh, so we can change that. I only want two, so we're going to use two segments. Uh, we can make them a little bigger. And if I double click on it, I can change the label that comes in here. So I'm going to have world, and we'll do this just like Android, and uh, America. So when they click on this, I'm going to do something. Uh, and I, I need to set some data depending on what which of these buttons are selected. All right. I'm sorry? This part? Uh, to change the labels, I double clicked on it. Or you can do it over here in the properties as well. Um, you can change the title, that's the title property, and then you can go to the next segment and change that one. So this lets me have as many segments as I want and uh, change all the properties for each one of those. Would it allow you to separate them, like the uh, all segments? No. no. If you want them separate, you create buttons. Oh. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, no, I'm just like, because like with radio buttons, you know, they're on top of each other. Yeah, no. So you just, no. Okay. They're very specific about their user interface, and they force you into their style. Okay. So that, and it's a good thing from the user's perspective, because every app looks almost the same, right? I mean, you can, they know what to do if they see this control on the screen. They can instantly know, oh, that's, I can choose those options. Um, so it's good from the user's perspective. So it looks like I might have stumbled upon the uh, centering problem. Um, this is in the in the view. It has this mode, and it looks like left is set by default. So I'm going to set it to center, and we'll set um, we'll set my calculate to center just to see if that fixes it. Yeah, it looks like we might have to. Um, where we go? View. There it is. View. Uh, and we want center for this one too. And let's run it and see if that fixes it. Yep, so that, that moved it, well, did it? No. No, it moved it. I didn't wait to the center, though. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't see. Let's go back and fix, set this one um, center for the radio button here, the segmented control. Hmm. It moved it to the right. <laughs> so it, that is the, the control. We'll have to play with this a little bit. Uh, I'll have to look up 
this and see. Oh, this is, has to do with flipping. So it it's probably has to do with these stretching. Well, anyway, I'll figure that out. Um, so let's move the let's add some code to this to this controller. And how do we how do we make a new action to control this control? Right, right click, right -click drag to a place where a method would be written, right here, and we're going to insert an action, and we'll call it, um, I don't know, change uh, location, how about that? Um, and let's make it a UI segmented control, and we want the event to have whenever the value changes, That's the most common. So when somebody clicks on it and changes from world to America, I want my code to, to change, to run, right? So, and the rest will leave uh, the same. Let's just take the sender and connect, and it writes a little bit of code for us, a little bit like the code behind in, in Visual Studio. All right, so this, uh, This method is, let's just for now print off the, some of these values. Now the sender is the object that is connected to this method. It's the value that's passed in. This is the argument, the object that's on the screen. So this sender object has methods and everything associated with it. So I'm going to call the sender dot um, selected segment index. That will give us a value of whatever they uh, have selected. So let's see what happens when we uh, sl select that. And so let's get our debugger window out <coughs> and run it. And so what, if we were checking for if they're checked, we would check the selected segment index? Yes. Yes. So I click on America, it changed, that's a one. World, it changes, that's a zero. So it's like the array index of all of these controls. So if I had five in here, it would go from zero to the one on the left, all the way up to you know, four on the one on the right. So it's like an array index, zero based. So if I click the same one, it doesn't change. It doesn't print out because that my action only gets triggered when the value of this button control changes. All right, does that make sense? All right, so now that we know what the segment index is, we can use that. Uh, we can just do a simple if, if the sender dot selected segment index equals zero, what would we do in that case? Well, let's set a variable. This is just real tiny. Let's set a variable called uh, uh, American. How about that? And we'll, we'll make that a Boolean. So if selected segment index is zero, what is the, what is selected? 
world. Okay, so American would be uh, false, right? And then otherwise American equals true. So that's the, the values that I'm going to use to, to change. So I need some variables in my class that are properties. So let's make it a uh, let's make a, a var American that is false to start with because world is the one that's selected in the beginning. All right, does that make sense so far? All right, and my code should work now. It has no errors. So all this does is set a variable. Um, and what I want to do then is, if they're American, like we did in the Android, I'm going to add more to their weight, right? So uh, in my code where I calculate the BMI, um, I'm going to add more to their weight in this condition. So after we get the data from the text fields, uh, we say if American, I want to take the weight and add 20 pounds. Does that make sense? So we're just using this like setting a flag in our uh, view controller and we're using that during our calculation only. So let's see if that works. So we'll put in a height again and a weight and world is selected so I calculate 25.11. Now if I change it to America that will set the flag, but it doesn't do the recalculation. I haven't added code to do that. So I have to re-hit calculate, and it does go up. So I know that America is different. Hit go back to world, it goes back to a lighter weight person. <laughs> All right, any questions on that? That's a, a segmented control. So you can see that we can add actions that happen to any of these, uh, we can add which we did to like our button here. Uh, we can add these outlets, which are just variables that allow us to get properties of these on-screen controls. And that's pretty simple to go back and forth between the view and the con view controller. <coughs> Any questions on that? Okay, the, the next thing I want to do is to uh, do the calculation whenever they click on this, actually calculate that, right? That would be nice. So oh, did you get that? Sorry. It, so let me say that. So we'll add that auto-calculate tomorrow. 